Uh -huh. Ah, a very good evening to you. Welcome, 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 I say, to the Scotty McClue Show. Now, we are, of course, live on the big one, Facebook Live. That's the one just for one hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment caused by you lot, the good burgers of not just one nation, but of course of all nations. Welcome, welcome, I say, to Sunday Night Live with me, Scotty McClue, here on Facebook Live, the world's great broadcast platform. Uh, Frankie's there, Angie's there, ah, there you are, Stuart McKenna, lovely, lovely, Heather Ferry, say hello to Bobby, please, I will, Heather, dinky-doo, Bobby, hello, Scotty, says Frankie Keen, dinky-doo, says Ron Stewart, Paul Mungle, hi, my big pal, hi to you, Paul, and to everybody out there, welcome, welcome, welcome to the world, I say. I'm Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster and first lord of the internet, and apparently the most humble man in the world. What about that one for you? There you are, extra stuff, new title of course, Lynn Kay's watching, Cameron Constable, and fit like Scotty, says Chris Harley there, with a nice bit of northeast dialect. Of course, evening McClue, says Alex Duff, how fantastic is that? Now guys, Lots to discuss tonight, you will probably have seen, and uh, you might agree, you might disagree, it doesn't really matter either way, the fact is you're here and you're one of the main people in the world, one of the most important people in the world, that's what you are. And uh, we've been talking about Glasgow, and uh, Glasgow is a city that um, is divided in its football. A wonderful, wonderful city, but it's divided in its football, Rangers and Celtic. And yesterday there was a Rangers-Celtic game, and uh, I always go along to Rangers-Celtic games early because there's a chance I'll get a game. And uh, what I'm proposing tonight is that we merge the two teams, right? Now, this is just a proposition. This is me putting something out to you to see what you think. But we merge the two teams so that Celtic and Rangers become Glasgow United, and then we can take on the world at football. So that's what we're discussing. Also, should we do, do away with ends in stands so that everybody stands together? All right, Ron Stewart, how you doing, says Angie Thompson. Evening, I hope you're well, Ben Lucas. Ron Stewart, dinky-doo, how's the bad back, Angie? You guys are having a conversation with yourselves. That's fantastic. Um, so there we go. And uh, how are you, Mr. McClure, says Mahir Peverell. I am fabulous. Thank you very much for asking. Evening, Squire, says Pete Gallagher. Rangers are dead, Scotty, says Paul Doherty. Paul, I'm sure that's not the thing at all. I'm sure there's lots more we can be doing. But the two teams could be merged as Glasgow United. Tell us what you think about that. Not a chance. Mon the hoops, says Andrew McKay. Yes, that's great, Andrew. Very good. Mon the hoops, mon the jairs, all that sort of stuff. But we're talking about moving forward. Glasgow United. Everybody stands together. Dab, Scotty, says Cameron. <laughs> Cameron, I dabbed for you. Well done. There we are. Excellent stuff. So lots of you with different ideas, and that's appreciated. Um, keep Rangers and Celtic apart when it's a local derby, says Steve Burrows. But Steve, this is the 21st century. People are grown up, they are mature, they've got media, they've got social media, they've got all these things, and it's time they were together. Better now, Ron, so there we are. Absolutely. She's had a Redox bath, but other brands are available. We shan't advertise. And uh, checking, I hope everybody's had a wonderful week, says Andrea Elizabeth Lucy McLaughlin. Andrea Elizabeth Lucy McLaughlin, we've had a fantastic week. Now, last week, um, the broadcast Yay! faded, and it was in two parts. So there we are. Excellent stuff. Now, that's LBC getting in touch, just letting me know. Uh, good morning from Australia, Scotty. How are you? Oh, I'm Dinkum. I'm absolute fair Dink America. Lovely to have you with us. So there you go. Uh, keep it a derby like the Edinburgh derby. Yes, a derby rather than an old firm game. 
All right, Scotty boy, how is it? Says Alan Beard, dinky do Alan. A very, very warm welcome to the Scotty McClure Show. We are, of course, live on the big one, Facebook Live, the one everyone's talking about and the one everyone is watching. Now, we're into thousands and thousands, guys. Thank you very much for sharing. I'm sorry you had to put up with two broadcasts last week, but we've done very well with them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This one, hopefully, will keep together to one. Um, I'm back, Scotty. I hope you never put money on my sheet, says George Mullen. Not yet, George. You're absolutely fine. So there you go. Um, all right, Scotty boy, how are we doing? No pennies in the eyes. Um, I don't know why the fans hate each other. Uh, we, if we were united in the Commonwealth Games, but it just takes the bunch of one side or another to begin the heat. <coughs> Excellent. Hello from Blackpool, Scotty, says Steph McIlvenny. Steph, welcome from Blackpool. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome to the Scotty McClure Show, live on Facebook Live. The well Stop broadcaster, first lord of the internet, here for you on the Sunday night saying dinky-doo. Uh, Paul Mungle says he's got something or other. Uh, we'll not share that. That sounds a bit personal, Paul. And um, shared, says Ron Stewart. Excellent, Ron. Tell everybody, guys, get typing. Type, 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 type. See, I'm watching Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live, the big one, the one everybody's watching. And uh, Sunday nights will never be the same. Too much detail, Paul, says George Mullen. I agree, George. That's why I didn't give the detail out. Alan says, I watched the old firm game in Ullapool in a wee pub called The Arch. Great wee crowd in the pub and quite mixed. Excellent. Of course, people are sensible outside the city. But I think if we took that rivalry away and saved any rivalry we've got for anybody outside the city, we would be the Glasgow team, Glasgow United. Um, how much would uh, a wood chuck chucker if a wood chuck could chuck wood? I think it's actually chop wood, Cameron, but well done. Hello, Scotty. Hope you're well. Football should be um, early in the morning and uh, half the fans carry out in the shops and pubs before the games and that creates violence. I agree with you. I think that's a very, very fair point. You're talking such sense, guys. This is what it's all about. When I come out with something very, very innovative, everybody starts to cheek up. Well, not everybody, because there's a lot of very clever people watch Scotty McClure. But you get people going, oh, you're an idiot. What are you on, Scotty? All that sort of rubbish. And, of course, that's because you've made them come out of the comfort zone and think a wee bit outside the box. Oh, right, so there we are. What colour of jersey would you suggest for Glasgow United? Hello from Dublin. What about if we went for red? So there you are. Nice colour there. Red tops, Glasgow United. There we are. And uh, lots and lots of um, reaction from you. We like this. You're right, Scotty, says Mark Clarence. Mark, Scotty McClue is virtually always right. Now, that's not me being smarty pants or anything. It's just everything is well thought out and factual. There we are. One or two idiots had to leave us during the week, uh, mainly for swearing. If I see um, a naughty word on my Facebook, then these people use it. It's an immediate block, an immediate ban. Uh, so there we are, an immediate ban. Because you don't need to swear to get your point across. People come on, they swear. A lot of young people watch Scotty McClure. What kind of example are we setting? So it's an instant ban if you are a swearer on Facebook, then Scotty McClue will block you. Okay, so there we go. And um, black and white, get it, says Michael McGuigan. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Uh, what about mixed sex football teams, says Paul Mungo? Yes, I was watching the ladies football one day. Very, very good. Some great stuff. They don't have the aggression and they don't seem to have the actual power of uh, of male football but very very interesting so there we are <clears throat> i it takes real men to wear pink says angie thompson pink pink for glasgow united would you be up for that guys would you like to see rangers and celtic in pink strips glasgow united uh, no need for swearing says louise sullivan absolutely louise there is never a need for swearing and certainly not on scotty mcclure's show but even on my facebook page I see it. There's a huge following of young people for Scotty McClure. Always has been. I used to always say that uh, Scotty McClure should actually be on Radio 1. 
and uh, you can say, oh, away you go. That's for young people. You say, no, no, but if you think about the number of young audience that I have, it would be massive. So there you are. Again, people not able to think outside the box, but I loved when uh, the controller of Radio 1 turned up at a conference I was speaking at. I'm very impressed by that. I absolutely loved it. I looked up just before we started and I thought, what's the controller of Radio 1? I wonder what he's come to hear Scotty McClue for. And then I thought, because of the massive, massive youth following that Scotty McClue has. You can't have mixed footy teams, men and women. Uh, you can't grab women's bits and women can't go for men's bits. Says Angie Thompson. Yes, I think that would be a red card job, Angie, to be quite honest. Swearing isn't as bad in Scottish culture, although there's a time and place for it. No, Dan, uh, we've all said a wee sweary word, but it just looks dreadful written down on Facebook when somebody comes on and says, what a such and such day I've had. And we think, I'm not interested because you are a swearer. Also, it loses impact. I noticed this when people were talking about independence for Scotland and they were swearing. And I thought, you're going to lose impact. You've just devalued everything you've said. You've actually said some very, very good things there, but you've devalued it. I also send out a message to the Yes campaign about the march last week. Very, very good. But you should audition your pipers. One or two of them let the side down with the quality of playing. And I know some of you will be going, oh, come on, Scott, it's great that they turned up and, and it's free and volunteered. And, but no, 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 it doesn't really create a great image when somebody's playing very, very seriously out of tune. Uh, Radio 1 is 50 years old this week. Tony Blackburn, the first DJ, and the song Flowers in the Rain. I know, George, um, I've met so many, many top DJs in my time just by default because we were working on the same radio stations tremendous um so there we are i would like to hear you doing um uh and mike read our tunes says paul mungle yes <laughs> mike read our tunes there we are top 40 it's got to with the top 40 in at number five there we are i appreciate the facebook live feeds and listening in a little bit more of a window from here into Scotland. Thank you for your work, says Andrea Elizabeth Lucy McLaughlin. And you're in America, Andrea Elizabeth Lucy McLaughlin. Have I got that right? Make sure you tell me. So there we are. Louise says you're not allowed to swear on Radio 1. They got cut off Scottish show if they swore. I can remember. You're not allowed to swear on radio. No, they did. They got cut off because they've lost their argument. It's just... The same as when somebody mentions a Second World War party in Germany, they've lost their argument. Think, think about it, guys. Four letters, and as soon as they say it, argument gone, out the windy, lost, finished. So there we are. Scotty McClure for Radio 1, says Frankie Keen. Thank you, do. This is McClure in the morning. It was Simon Beats, our tune, says George Mullen. Absolutely all on there. All wonderful, wonderful broadcasters now. And am I not right in thinking that the great Sir Terry, Terry Wogan, he started on Radio 1 as well. Alan Fluff Freeman, all these guys. From Thousand Oaks in California, USA, says Andre Elizabeth Lucy McLaughlin. Thousand Oaks, California, USA, and you're watching Scotty McClure Live, the world's great international talk show. How tremendous is that? With the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet and the world's most humble man. Excellent stuff. We like that. Great stuff. And um, yes, I appreciate that. Uh, so tremendous. Thank oh, you've put that in twice. Appreciate the Facebook Live feeds listening in. Thank you for your work. Yes, you've said that twice. Excellent stuff. So there we go. I've just been joined by a Labrador here. So uh, that's that's rather good. I'll see if I can just, I might just see if I can show you him. Uh, I don't know if you can see him. Labrador? Labrador, who's that? Uh, he, uh, he does not, um, so there we go. He does not like people looking at him. So, <laughs> excellent stuff. Labrador, what have you done? I think he's tapped the screen. So there we are, excellent stuff. Right, stay with us, folks, not a problem. <laughs> oh, what's happened there? Yay! Right, I seem to uh, I've lost you. We'll soon get you back, folks. Stay with us, no problem at all. 
um, and uh, we'll see if we can bring you back round. If not, we will continue without vision. <laughs> and we have got vision. We have almost... Ah, there you are. I lost you for a second or two. I tried to show the Labrador and he stuck his nose in the screen. Uh, no sound, Scotty McClure, says Paul. Are we back, folks? Have we got sound now? Uh, no, you don't want to be associated with the BBC, says Dan McWilliams. Well, we might try and make it a much better place. Scotty McClure working for the BBC would bring back its respectability, if you think about it. Uh, and will your radio secret come out, says Andrew Mackay. Uh, Louise Sullivan says, no, uh, I could see your ceilings. Absolutely, we could. Is the sound back, guys? Can you hear the sound all right? Fantastic stuff. The problem with uh, modern IT is, of course, it's so tiny and it's so sensitive. Uh, have you had any foxes in the garden lately, Scotty? Yes, Steve. I had a little fox six inches away from my foot, but I didn't want to disturb it and go and get the camera and let you all see. Hi, Scotty, and join, and join the show. Stuart from Peterhead. I, Peterhead, up there uh, in the northeast. Nee farfly the brook. Am I right or am I right? So there you are. Uh, do you know Crimmond, where the, the great old Sam tune, The Lord's My Shepherd, it's usually sung to Crimmond, that comes from there, doesn't it? Uh, Scotty McClure on BBC Two saying dinky doo. Do you know, Ron Brown, it's so interesting you saying that because I thought, how good would Scotty McClure rhyme with all the Radio Two stuff? This is Scotty McClure live on Radio Two. Dinky doo. Not to forget Untouchable when he was alive. Oh, yes. We will not go on with that, George. Uh, hi, Scotty. What do you think of Donald Trump? I don't think he now knows how to handle criticism. All good leaders must be able to handle criticism. Well, you're looking at a man that has handled probably more criticism than it's fair to throw at a human being. And uh, I don't mind <coughs> either way. I can handle it. Uh, Paul Francis Carroll is on. Dinky do. Paul Francis Carroll, welcome to our program. Fantastic stuff. Program 49. Hi, Scotty. I'm late as usual, says Peter Boy. Peter Boy, I'm very glad you're here because we're discussing a subject dear to your heart. We're saying should Rangers and Celtic unite and become Glasgow United. There we are. Uh, the BBC should be booted out of Scotland. They're biased towards independence in Scotland, says Robert Riley Dowd, Senior 2. Robert Riley Dowd, Senior 2, you um, can also say, well, look, it might never be justified to be biased. I felt the BBC virtually was on the ropes at the Iraq war time. They had told the truth. The government didn't want it at the time and went bananas. And they ended up losing their chairman and the director general, one of the finest director generals, great guy. And uh, they lost them and it was very humiliating for the BBC. The uh, governors, as they were at the time, they're now called the BBC Trust, just completely caved in, completely collapsed, and didn't fight uh, number 10. And that's been the big problem with the BBC since its inception in 1922. The guy that started it up, the four employees, John Reith from Glasgow, from uh, over in uh, Linda Street and Park, I think it was, he was brought up. And um, his father was uh, was a free church minister, Dr. Reith. And um, he went down to London, started up the BBC because the government thought, we've got to get hold of the airwaves, this newfangled thing. It is so powerful. And um, Reith set it up. And in 1926, four years later, he fought Churchill uh, over the general strike. Churchill offered him £100 of his own money if he could broadcast to the BBC. And Reith said, the BBC is not for sale. Well, the BBC was for sale and it became uh, the government propaganda machine in uh, the Iraq war. And that was that. Unfortunately, it's never quite had the same amount of balance since. Also, the clue is in the word British, British broadcasting. So it's saying we will not partake in anything that could involve us being booted out of Scotland because we take 325 million quid a year out of Scotland. So there you are. Uh, that's what's going on there. Um, I do not and never will pay for a TV license, says Paul. Glasgow stands for Dear Green Place, so we should play in green. So Glasgow United, the uh, strip should be green. Is everybody up for that? Everybody 
happy with that. My pal Lizzie loves your bonnet, Scotty. She said uh, you're playing hide and seek, uh, as though you were hiding for a minute there. Yes, no, no, that was the dog. I thought I'd introduce you to the dog who came to say hi, but he took his big nose and went shove in the screen, and that, of course, turned the, the camera around. It would be a bloodbath if these teams joined, says Angie Thompson. Angie, I do not know why you say that, right? Why should it be a bloodbath? Let's just wipe the history. We're starting new. Glasgow United would play together. The supporters would be 100% united. They stand together. Liverpool and Everton stand together at, uh, at Goodison and all the rest of it. Not a problem down there. So uh, I don't know what the problem would be in Scotland. Going to the Seaside Highland Games in October for my birthday located in Ventura, California. Going to learn more about Scotland than the clans there. What do you think of the Highland Games? Well, of course, I've been a chieftain at the Highland Games. You'll see that. I think it was about 10 years ago now. The Bales Den and Mogai Highland Games. And they always chose very famous people as their chieftains. And they very kindly chose Scotty McClure one year. So that was good. They had Sir Douglas Bader, the air ace, and they had George Takai, and they had Red Rum, the racehorse, when he was about. There you are. You can't let history go. That's the problem, says Angie Thompson. Angie, we've got to let history go, right? There's no point in shouting freedom and Bannockburn and all that. We've got to look at Scotland now and go ahead, young, modern country ready for action so there you are and that's why it needs its freedom uh, so there we go lots and lots going on uh, highland games ever come here uh, time for me scott it's always good to listen to a very wise man i uh, you enjoy your week and look forward to catching you next time erica you have a lovely lovely sleep my darling a lovely night and uh, we'll see you soon have a lovely day you're probably going out to work what am i talking about you're in australia for goodness sake it's just incredible to think the Scotty McClure show is going out right round the world to 1.8 billion people. Uh, talking BBC Live, I've always thought like the other channels, there should be advertising to pay for it, says Robert Riley Dowd, Senior 2. Yes, I think that'd be interesting, but would they get the advertising? Because some of the programmes are a wee bit drich. So they are. <coughs> and uh, I was just absolutely shocked when I realised some of the actual numbers of viewers and listening. And when I say shocked, I mean down the way. And I look at Scotty McClue. I watched a national radio station with a very famous uh, presenter on it last week. And um, the figures weren't really very much more than we get on the Scotty McClue show on a Sunday night on Facebook Live. And that just shows you, if we get these figures on Facebook Live, what would you get on a huge national radio station. Tremendous. There we are. You're having a laugh. I'm a Rangers supporter. Never in my life will that happen. Says Craig Flanagan. No, Craig, I'm not having a laugh. I'm putting a very sensible piece of thought to you. <coughs> totally agree with the Glasgow United football team. For so long, religion and bigotry has played a part. Religion should never be a part of sport. It should never be anything to do with Glasgow football, right? It shouldn't actually matter. And even right now, you should have to take a, a buddy along to uh, an old firm game from the other side. So there's my pal, my pal Walter Free Rangers. He's, uh, he's in with me here. And myself, of course, Sean from, uh, from, from Celtic, from the Celtic. So there you go. Uh, what happened to Go Radio Station? Did it ever get off the ground? Not to my knowledge, Paul. <coughs> I do pardon me. I think I need a sip of tea. I'll take my Seize the Day mug. Mm. No, not to my non non knowledge. Um, pardon me. I was, uh, of course, uh, to be one of the presenters on it, but uh, we didn't hear any more about it. So there you are. Uh, amazing. Uh, now, I pay a fortune for a TV license. All I've watched in two weeks is the ballroom dancing last night. I have cable and not a thing on it. Angie, I looked through several channels one night and I thought there is nothing here. I want to watch and the Scotty McClure show right now I'm not blowing my own trumpet here I'm just telling you straight the Scotty McClure show on a Sunday night there is nothing on terrestrial television or satellite television to touch this program and I've said for years put me on for half an hour every night or even just a Friday night put me on like this live on your television 
and have a television company that's got access to telephones and the people phone in. So there you are. They might even get a special rate or get it free if they're subscribers. And the audience would be absolutely massive. But you need a very switched on programmer. What's happened in radio and television is that as uh, radio and television has evolved in this country and technologies got quicker and quicker and sharper and sharper and you can get it on your, your phone or what have you, they haven't kept the content up to match that. So there's nothing innovative. Now, I know I'm uh, a little bit past 21, but having said, not much, not much, just stop all that. Um, but having said that, I would be quite willing to start it off for them to show them what happens when you put on a genuine live program that interacts with the uh, You're back in the wild as soon, says Craig Gorman. Uh, yes, there's discussion going on all the time, Craig. I know it takes its time, but uh, people text me and they say, Scotty, we're wading through all sorts of things, but we will be with you as soon as we have uh, an answer, as soon as we make progress. Uh, I've not watched any live channels since 2014. Indiref will never again waste money uh, on rubbish programmes, says Robert Riley Dowd, Senior 2. Gone yourself, STV2, you would be a sensation. It would be absolutely massive on STV2. Even half an hour, say, we're going live now, phones, folks. And everybody goes, wow, Sky's on the, Sky's on the telly. Uh, Janet Nielsen's watching. Uh, question, if Indiref was to happen today, what would you vote? What would I vote? I've always voted for an independent Scotland. Now, I'm not a party political man. I'm apolitical, right, as a presenter and as a journalist. But from an economic point of view, economically, pure economics, and remember Scotland's got some of the finest economists in the world. They will tell you that Scotland would do very, very well if it wasn't shackled to the shambles that's going on down in Westminster won't. By the way, just to let you know, a soft Brexit, I would say, equals um, a remain in Europe. So there we are. So Mrs May's speech in Florence, she was buying time, and uh, I would say that's Brexit virtually on the back burner. So when people say, we're leaving the EU, you say, yes, bits and bits and pieces, but in actual fact, it would cost a fortune and cause a tremendous upset. So I think what they're doing is paying lip service to um, the people in the party who were pushing uh, a lot of stuff that was duff gen. Uh, I think really if we were genuine about leaving Europe, what we would need to do is uh, rerun the referendum with the facts, right? Don't let the politicians do it. Let people like myself handle stuff like that and run it with the facts and tell you what is what you can then go away and vote. Same with the Scottish referendum. Uh, you know, that was grabbed and nabbed. The media weren't playing fair, and we had senior politicians, former politicians, well, politicians they still were, former very senior politicians, up selling us a pub. Okay. Good evening, Scotty. The Scotty McClure Show on TV would be great viewing up and down the country, says Alex Robertson. Thank you, Alex. I would have you on as a guest, the famous actor. Alex Robertson for interview. Good evening, Scotty McClue, says Giuseppe Bacchetti. Um, get on to YouTube, guys, and see some of the Scotty McClue interviews. There's a couple of great ones there. A couple with uh, top football agent Bill McMurdo, and also with David Heyman, the actor. Tremendous stuff. And, of course, Scotty McClue gets right down to all the uh, minutiae in an interview. I think Scotty McClue, last call show, the right reverend. Scotty McClure, the very Reverend Scotty McClure. Bobby, hello. What kind of day have you had? <laughs> As a great lover of radio, local radios to radio, connecting and interacting with its audience, do you think the radio networkers understand this? No, Tony, the radio networkers now have virtually got a monopoly in radio. There's just a, a few companies, right? And what they'll hope to do is put out one output across the whole country by buying up all the local radio stations. The problem is it then becomes a totally different animal. But the thing about Scotland that makes that difficult, and to a certain extent Wales and Northern Ireland, is that they have a completely different culture to the uh, London and the South East culture. So, you know, it's all very well saying, whoa, good morning, here we are in Scotchland. Not going to work, and the audience will just start to go away 
Uh, yes, you can play half a dozen tunes in rotation, good music, and uh, your builders and your painters and that will put it on for a bit, but eventually they'll just put it off because they'll think, I can get this on my phone. So there you are. Remember, Scotty McClure might be up at the moment on Facebook Live. But remember, if you're not watching them on Facebook Live, you're not watching them. It cuts both ways. So there we are. Uh, hi, em everyone out there, says Paul Goodyear. Thank you, do. I'd like to see you back on TV or the airwaves. You're barely drawing 34 viewers here. You need a new agent. Or you need to up your game, says Dan McWilliams. Not at all, Dan. Don't be fooled by what you're seeing on here with your 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, depending on what we're doing. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we drew 15,000, um, and that for Facebook video live is pretty good. So look at it. You can see it there. Just scroll down. You'll see 15,000. Um, last week, I think we were up three, 4,000, and uh, the week before, 6,500, stuff like that. So there you are. Now, um, Scotty McClure is actually bigger now across social media. Remember, Facebook Live is um, a piece in the jigsaw. We've also got the YouTube channel, Scotty McClure YouTube channel. We're also on LinkedIn. The Scotty McClure website attracts well over 10 million people. So it's absolutely huge. Scotty McClure globally is massive. America is in love with Scotty McClure. I'm something of a demigod in America. They would like me as the next president of the United States, but I'm not an American citizen, so I'd have to do something about that. Have you thought about Speaker.com podcasts? Wouldn't cost much, around $20 a month. Peter Boy, this is why we need people to contribute to GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClure. A couple of pounds here and there from everyone would make a massive difference to running the program. So there we are. And uh, what have we got here? Uh, Scotty, your shows need a theme tune. I know, Paul, yes, but you wouldn't actually be able to broadcast it without paying the royalties. Think about it. Speech, zero royalties. Not a problem. We could sit here and talk all night. What I was going to put to you all is would you like to see more of McClue rather than less of McClue? In other words, should we do a show other nights in the week? Or perhaps we did moot a breakfast show, but it would be 6 to 6.30 in the morning uh, just to get the world up. Scotty, can you get my hero, Nigel Farage, on, please, says Craig Flanagan. Nigel uh, has a show on LBC, Craig, so you can actually see him on LBC during the week. Good show, actually. I, I quite often tune in. I, a real one, make one yourself, says Giuseppe Bichetti. Uh, go back, going back to radio, uh, listening to about 20-odd years ago, late-night chat was quite funny. Some of the callers you had, Robert Riley Dowd, Senior 2, uh, we were well up to quarter of a million listeners per half hour on a local radio station with a 2.2 million TSA. So you had over 10% of the station were listening to Scotty McClure, 10% of the audience, which is uh, phenomenal. Uh, definitely more of McClure, please, says Tony Mac. So there you are. Build myself into a bit of a name, eh? Uh, it makes me laugh, the people that are always, oh, uh, he's full of himself, he's full of himself. Not at all. One of us has to come on and host the show. I do that. It's your show. All right? So there we are. Although it's called the Scotty McClure Show, it's the world's top talk show, and you can all join me. And a lot of people that can't join us live, for whatever reason, they're out, they're working, they're, they're watching the favourite telly, they're putting the kids to bed, um, they're doing the children's homework, whatever. They come and join us during the week. That's why, as I say, don't ever be put off by um, with the smaller numbers watching. That doesn't matter. That will grow and grow and grow and grow. And every single one of you, it's lovely when I see 143 people like your show. And uh, what I would like to see is 143 people share my show. That's the thing. So share, 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 share. In fact, I think we're just coming up to share time now. That would be tremendous. Thank you if you can all share that right now. Oh my goodness, yes. Uh, why not go live on Instagram one night, Scotty, says Andrew Mackay. That's an interesting one. We can look at all these platforms, Andrew. We haven't even scratched the surface. I've only been doing this show for just under a year. This, I think, show number 49 tonight. 
um, and it really just started as a quick go live to say hello to people and now we've got 49 shows there's actually a lot more because we've slipped one or two in and then there's all the promos there's, so there's probably about 60 live pieces scott uh, scotty what radio station uh, did you start with up here scott fm scott fm scotland's finest radio hour to date tremendous radio station massive radio station two great big transmitters 101.1 and 100.3 uh one from i think it was craig kelly and fife and the other from black hill in the west of scotland and we boomed out right across the whole of central scotland and you could hear it in the south and you could hear it in the north as well tremendous andre elizabeth lucy mclaughlin and shared Thank you, Andre Elizabeth Lucy McLaughlin, for sharing. Appreciate it. So there we go. I would be honoured to be a guest, as you said earlier, says Alex Robertson, one of our finest young actors watching right now, Alex Robertson. There's a great name. If you're looking for a top actor, Alex Robertson. There you are. Scott FM was the days I remember fondly, says Paul Mungo. Yes, and we did the video as well. All that stuff. I would say I've got another 25 years of good, solid work in me before I look at hanging up my headphones. So there we are. Unless the good Lord has different ideas, but there we are. That's what I'm looking at. So we'll be around for another 25 years, guys. So we'll build and build and build and build. I was actually thinking about a lot of local radio today, and I was saying Scotty McClue has perhaps outgrown some of the uh, some of the stations now, um, because they are not doing speech well. Uh, it's time to share, 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 share. I saw that one of my former colleagues is thinking about cutting back in his workload, and he's 71. So they are a wonderful guy, very, very experienced talk radio man. Shared Scotty from Robert Rogerson, the Doom Hamer, Fred Dumfries, Doom Ham, Doom Hamer Dumfries, Dumfries is where I'll stay. When touring Scotland, you must come this way. There we are. Never heard of um he English, David Paul Malone. So there we are. No, 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 big Scottish actor, very, very good. So there you are. You've heard of him now. So you can't say you've never heard of him. My goodness me. First contact, well done, says Paul Goodyear. Excellent stuff. Uh, Scotty, don't know what went wrong. No sound or video there, says Angie. Is everybody else getting sound and video, guys? Uh, right now, we know right now. Shared, says Vivian Cowan. Dinky doo, Vivian. Now, tonight, we're discussing two things. Scottish football. Glasgow United. We get the Rangers and the Celtic to unite as one team. So there we are. We nearly lost Rangers a couple of years ago. Uh, trying to start a Celtic-inspired film producer company here in the United States. So Scottish actor name-dropping is helpful. Yes, you could use Scotty McClue. I'll come and do your uh, do your, narr your narration, your voiceovers, all that stuff. If, as soon as NMD gets uh, Scotty McClue in their commercials, everything starts flying off the shelf. Tremendous. So there we go. You get me presenting one of your commercials. Boom time. Boom time. There we are. Uh, working in the capital, Scotty, says David Fraser. Uh, excellent. Are you talking Edinburgh, David, I hope? So there we are. That's the capital. Mel Brooks was on the show at 91, still working and sharp as a tack. Absolutely. I've got an old friend that I work with who's 94 and he lights up a room when he comes in. George lights up a room. Great colleague of mine, 94, dapper as you like, wonderful guy, superb personality, and great fun. And he's 94. He said, well, I've seen 94 off. <laughs> That's George for you. Wonderful man, and I work with him. Um, so there you are. Thank you. I'll keep you in mind, says Andrea Elizabeth Lucy McLaughlin. Big name, Andrea, big name. And um, also, don't panic when you see uh, big names like Scotty McClue. Don't think the fees will be astronomical. Not at all. We do something to suit you. <coughs> Pardon me. Time for another sip of the tea. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful there. Fantastic. They are just what we need. Uh, we did lose Rangers in 1872. Uh, the, oh, we did lose Rangers in 1872. The Tribute Act that is there now is just 
Uh, Sevco in disguise, says George Mullen. Well, we don't know about that, George. That's your opinion. But the fact is that Rangers are there, and they might not have been, and that's rather good. Celtic Rangers United. God, that'll never happen. There's Robert Riley Red Senior too. Robert, it won't happen if everyone doesn't open their hearts and minds and think, Do you know, Scotty is a great wise man. So there we are. A great wise man. Because what I'm doing on the show here is getting you to think outside the box. Rather than go, oh that'll never happen, that'll never happen. When I started the GoFundMe.com. Everyone said, he'll not get a bean in that. We're doing very well. And that's nothing to what comes in on PayPal. PayPal.me forward slash Scotty McClue or one word. Right? So there you go. It's absolutely incredible. And people doubted this show. They said, ah, that'll not last, that Facebook thing. Right? We're coming up to a year. In fact, I think we're probably past the year. I'll check the date on the first one. I'm sure it was September. Uh, what do you do during the day, Scotty, says Ryan Brownlow? I am absolutely maxed, Roy. So there we are. Um, I do a lot of work during the day, a lot of lecturing, a lot of teaching. And um, I also um, have so much work on. I do stuff for people. I do their uh, advertising. I advise very, very senior people on their presentation. I could do with advising one or two government figures at the moment because their presentation is uh, really leaves a little bit to be desired so they should be getting in touch with scotty mcclue tip you the wink there uh we we do with very very senior people who inspired you when you were younger scotty my mother and father of course my grandfather my music teacher tremendous my grandmother as well wonderful wonderful inspirational people my mother was named after um the suffragettes so there you are my grandmother was in London at the time of the suffragettes. Tremendous stuff. Now, follow your town's clubs. Airdrie, Airdrie, Albion, Hamilton and Motherwell. So there you are, says Dan McWilliams. It's very interesting because um, if you merge the teams, if you think about it, say we took Manchester City, Manchester United, made them one team. Sheffield Wednesday, Sheffield United made them one team. <clears throat> so, you know, tremendous stuff. Lol, Steve. So, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, so lots of people, my music teacher was a wonderful man. Had taught in Africa and taught a lot of famous people. And uh, he was just, he was just different class. Tremendous stuff. Wonderful, wonderful man. Um, so there we are, Lol Stevie. Excellent. Right, if you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue. We are, of course, live on the big one. The one everyone's watching, the one everyone's talking about. During the week, share and share and share and share this. Tell everybody about it. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live around the world globally on Facebook Live. That was another thing. When I went to functions and I met senior media people, the first few shows, they were giggling. <laughs> Here's Scotty, <laughs> Facebook Live. And then the faces straightened a wee bit and they thought, here, hang on a wee minute. He's the man on the telly. Excellent. So I would say to anybody that's got anything to do with television or radio, get in touch with Scotty McClue and uh, we will sort it out. That should be a first step. Music teacher, did he hear you singing? Says George Mullen. Oh, oh, he heard me singing. Tremendous. <clears throat> there we are. I worked in opera. I don't know what you're on about. Scotty, I would love to have had you as a radio lecturer. I've always greatly loved listening to you on the radio when you were growing up. I think I get invited to go round and lecture on the radio. I have been a visiting professor on radio, and um, that will no doubt continue. So there we are. Um, somebody that was once telling me my fortune said, you'll go on a plane uh, when you're very old, on a plane coming back from somewhere like China, having delivered an international lecture, Scotty. So there you are. So I know it's going to happen to me there. <laughs> they kept saying the old firms should play in the English League. Well, they don't want them in all their baggage. Build a ground on the Outer Hebrides and they can play each other every week themselves as they say. After James Wright, you put lovely, lovely long posts, but I can't click see more because when I do it, sometimes it goes uh, broadcast concludes or whatever, whatever it says. It finishes the broadcast. <laughs> and we don't want that. If you've just joined us, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're shocking, shockingly, horribly and appallingly late. We start at 10 o'clock sharp. Never ever miss a second of Scotty McClue. You miss a second of Scotty McClue, you miss a moment of 
life. This is the world's top talk show. <coughs> now, pardon me. Sorry about cleaning the floor all the time. I think uh, maybe we don't need to marry Scotty. Just learn to live together, says Giuseppe Machetti. What you have to do, Giuseppe, is stand together at the grounds. Drop, was he at the Rangers end or the Celtic again? Was it? What end was, what end was he at? Oh, I think he's one of them. You might watch him. Just a lot of rubbish. A lot of absolute nonsense. So there you are. Remember, Scotty McClue broadcasts live to everyone. Remember, there's only one race, the human race. So there you are. And all races, creeds, colours, religions, Scotty McClue broadcasts to them all. Remember, you can only have a problem if you have a them and an us. If it's just us, there we are. And uh, what you'll find was um, it was the Prime Minister, William Pitt, at the time. <clears throat> he was getting very, very worried because Ireland were combining together the working class of Ireland and all the rest of the people of Ireland were all getting together um, as working people in Ireland and they were going to take their cause to Westminster and there was a panic on William Pitt somebody said what are you going to do about Ireland because they're all together and William Pitt said I shall use the Orange Lodge and divide them up and the Orange Lodge is still used by successive British governments to divide everybody up because the big panic of politicians is that we're all together that we're just there as us so there you are um, I'd love to have been one of your radio students, if that's okay. Of course, Tony. Absolutely no problem at all. I've lectured at university all over the country and what have you. Uh, they keep saying, yes, uh, yes, they don't want them with the baggage. Well, no, that's true. They don't actually want people with the baggage. Guys, can we have another share point? Because I'm getting slightly concerned that the time is flying in. Um, I don't know what you've got here, but I've got just after a quarter to... Um, 11 here and we have to finish at 11 o'clock sharp and do you think the press fuel the bigotry in Glasgow and Scotland no I think the press are just reflecting on what's out there but yes the media certainly do play it up because it's important as it is for the politicians it's important for a lot of the media to divide and rule but I would like to see a lot more reporting of the independence movement in Scotland as I say what I would say to the independence movement audition your pipers if you're organizing a march because there were some good souls but they were playing a very very unmerry tune and uh, you know it, it it looked it looked awful actually and also your flags organize your flags so that they're in rows rather than just wandering along flapping in the wind and read the flag in the wind by John McCormick read the um, difficulties that John had keeping the movement organized the huge fallouts all the time in politics and that's the danger so there you are people are actually doing one on their own doorstep and when i suggested last week um that uh, we need to sort out the monarchy thing before we even look at independence and make sure we take the queen with us as our sovereign lady the queen the queen of scotland and the queen of scots uh, you know, we need to be looking at that and then press on with the independence and the economic freedom. Right, our production company is still assembling stories and material, but if we're known as Celtic Heart Productions, we'd love to have you involved in some of our upcoming projects. Andrea Elizabeth Lucy McLaughlin, do let me know because America beckons for Scotty McClue. Somebody's saying the other day, get yourself out to Seattle, get yourself over to America where the media is king. You're wasting, you're wasting uh, time. And I said, no, you're never, ever wasting time because we're doing big, big social media experiments. And it's tremendous. And if you look at Scotty McClue, millions upon millions. Remember, Facebook goes out to 1.8 billion. If we can get everybody on Facebook in the audience, then that's a start. So there you are. Um, I would love to, yes, uh, do you, you're sorry, sorry, I beg your pardon, yes, I've already read that, excellent stuff, so look at that, if you've just joined us, a very warm welcome to the World's Top Talk Show with me, Scotty McClue, one hour on a Sunday night, 10 o'clock sharp, superb, scintillating information, education and entertainment for the nation, spread the word, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. 
Tell a hundred to tell a hundred to tell a hundred. Tell a thousand to tell a thousand to tell a thousand. Tell a million to tell a million to tell a million. Tell a billion to tell a billion to tell a billion about Scotty McClue live. If you know anybody in radio or television companies, say to them, get in touch with Scotty McClue. Get that program going on on your television channel. Friday night, half an hour, Scotty McClue live, interacting with the nation. Uh, Scotland needs its very own king or queen. Well, we've got it. We've got the queen there. She's ready. She's a Scot herself. She's 50% Scots. Her mother was 100% Scots. Lady Elizabeth Ange Angela Marguerite Bowes Lyon from the Strathmores, Glam's Castle in Forfar, uh, Forfarshire, just out there. There are not many Nats who are pro monarchy, Scotty, no, but they need to be after James Wright because if they don't do that, then the nationalist movement is perceived as being um, against the crown, and that's not popular. That's not good stuff. Uh, remember that it's actually a distraction, if I can put it that way without being disrespectful. Um, it's a distraction. It's nothing to do with independence, right? Nothing to do with that at all. So these people reacting and swearing and shouting out, it's again, it's again, and panic and all that stuff. We need to live together with the unionists. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you have a movement like the nationalist movement, and remember Scottish nationalism is the antithesis of British nationalism or German nationalism. It's a totally different thing. It's a caring, caring culture. Scotland has never been so well run as it has in the last 10 years. Tremendous stuff. So there's a lot going for it, but uh, they need to sort that out. Otherwise, it gets perceived as coming from the wrong place. Do you get my meaning? Yes, it's anti-monarchist, it's anti-the crown, therefore it's not acceptable. Whereas, if you think of the power of an independence movement, pro-monarchy, yes, we take the queen and the pound with us when we go independent, then you're seeing movement. A uh, 10 minute warning, Scotty, you have to see in 10 minutes, says Ross. German, says Dan Lewis. no, no, that's going a way back, right? Prince Albert was German. He was a uh, saxe coburg Goethe. Prince Philip, his family were Danish, right? So Prince Philip's originally Danish, yes. And uh, they were invited to come to take the throne of Greece. Remember, there was royalty all over the world at the time. That's what kept the world together as well. And Prince Albert's idea was for Europe, united by crowned heads. And there's nothing wrong with being German, right? Think about it. For goodness sake, it's part of our own history. So yes, we're German monarchs. George the Fourth was the wee wee German lady in his pink tights and what have you. But we work together, hand in hand, independence and the crown working together. So there you are. Excellent. That's what I see. Good evening, Scotty. So Sharon Holmes, kiss, kiss, kiss. To you as well, Sharon Holmes. Uh, everyone said that to me. My wife's marriage would not work. We're now 12 years married and getting stronger together. What do you think is the secret to a good marriage? Talking. Things like the Scotty McClure show. Talking is the secret, Tony. And um, having conversation with each other. A lot of couples say, no, we hardly need to talk nowadays. Marvels, we know what the other's thinking. You think, nonsense. Don't give me that nonsense. You're putting up with each other. Um, everyone said that. So there we are. I agree. Agree with your wife, says George Mullen. Or don't interrupt her. Just sit quiet. Some people haven't spoken to their wives for 30 years, not because they don't love them. They just don't want to interrupt them. So there we are. They say that... Uh, God made Adam and Eve, but he made Adam earlier than Eve so that he and Adam could have a conversation without being interrupted. Woo! You're all shouting at your, at your phones and your tablets and your PCs now. So there we are. Evening, Scotty, says Andy Hughes. Evening, Andy. Dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty McClue, live just for you. Worldwide, my goodness. More sharing. Share, 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 share. I have got, I think, five minutes. Is that right, guys? You can see the clock probably clearer than me. I've got the big bright lights here, remember. My mate's asking what the Queen has ever done for you. She has done massive, massive amounts over the last, uh, what are we at now? 
75 years incredible so there we are um you know over the last 75 years um as princess elizabeth and then as her majesty the queen as well diamond jubilee tremendous stuff so there we are queen victoria made that our queen has even gone past that the royal family cost us 52 pence a year it's an absolute bargain and they bring in billions to the economy and trade deals so tremendous so very important that scotland keeps its monarchy uh, 12 years try 30 and not married still very happy without the piece of paper says robert riley down senior too but do not think if you're having a child you should have the piece of paper to make the child legitimate there we are think about that uh, i know scotty's secret is the wife keeping her man puffed out absolutely if the wife keeps her man puffed out then he's not fit to wander uh, what kind of loud ping noise is that it's deafening says angie thompson it's some of you lot coming in angie on the pc we've got a whole variety of technical stuff here to bring you the scotty mcclue show live for one hour on a sunday night at 10 o'clock sharp and that would be somebody just pinging in so there we are. Scott is a legend, says Frankie Keen. So you, Frankie, dinky do, I say. Another great show, Scotty, says Steve Burrows. Steve, I thank you, and I thank the millions and millions of people who will be watching this show. I shall upload it on to Scotty McClue YouTube channel. So look out for that. Look out for Scotty McClue on LinkedIn. Look out for Scotty McClue on Twitter. So there you are. If you disagree with me, come and put your point. Don't just be a dafty. I say, oh, oh, that man! Oh, see, do you hear what he said? Don't, you know, just a lot of nonsense. Um, so there we are. Fantastic stuff. Keep your calls coming, guys. Or oh, your calls. There we are. Did you like that one? Keep your stuff coming in. And um, we've got about uh, four minutes, I think. Is that right? Nobody can back to me with the time. Scotty, thank you for your advice. I love and respect you very much. Tony Mac, I thank you. And get on with your radio stuff as well there's all these platforms out there tremendous stuff and uh, scotty mcclue has now been with you for uh, over 25 years is that worth a couple of quid in gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue or paypal.com you'll get both of these logos on the scotty mcclue website www.scotty hyphen mcclue.com and we'll build up over the next 25 years into an international media company i'm also looking to raise serious money so look for me with the little um the blue jumper and the polka dot tie and uh, look for that one there's about twenty thousand people have seen that on twitter uh fantastic stuff um george mother says 10 57 10 57 good 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 so we're all right for a couple of minutes eddie doby senior he agrees 10 57 so i take it that will be uh, 10.58 now since we've been chatting big style uh, spread the word as I say tell everyone about this program it's up to you how big the show becomes all right and share and share and share during the week I will send out stuff on Facebook and it says share 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 please do that it's only a click uh, you know don't have attitude and go off <laughs> no bother with him disagreed with him all that kind of nonsense you know forget that uh, marriage is much more than just a piece of paper it speaks of faithfulness and commitment there cannot be a more beautiful thing those whom god hath joined together let no man put asunder marriage is an holy estate not to be entered into lightly so there you are Alex Robertson, yes, 1057. Thank you for that, Alex. Sunday wouldn't be Sunday without Scotty McClure, says Alfred James Wright. Alfred James Wright, lovely to hear you. Thank you very much. Join in spreading the word. It's a massive, massive program. And remember, this video will go round the internet, picking up audience all the time. Much respect. Thank you. See you next time. You'll be hearing from our Celtic Heart Productions group. Do that. Andrea, Elizabeth, Lucy, McLaughlin, because this, as you probably have guessed, is absolutely massive. The audiences for Scotty McClue are huge. I would quite like to break into the American market. You know the American market. You've got the contacts out there. And obviously, you and I 
could come to some sort of arrangement of that. We'll get Celtic Productions going round the world. You know, you could do um, a, a fantastic job with that. And as I say, all your top television and radio companies, their step one is get a hold of Scotty McClue. Uh, because 40 years of experience of film, television and radio. 40 years experience of acting. 40 years experience of voiceover. 40 years experience of three hours a night. Argy bargy, live on the radio, totally unscripted. 36,000 hours of unscripted broadcasting in all the major markets in the UK. How amazing is that? I'm not blowing any trumpets, I'm just telling you. There we are, telling you straight. There's Pauline now, says George Mullen. Uh, fantastic. So there we are. Uh, nosy like you, George, says Pauline. Absolutely. Coming to sort you out, George, and see what is what. Right, Scotty McLean will have to go. I've got a minute. I've got a minute. Let's use it well and use it wisely. I always think, I don't want to make too light of, obviously, nuclear warnings when you've got, um, you know, um, Mr. Trump uh, shouting and bawling about, uh, you know, we will do that. We will destroy this and destroy that and all that stuff. Kind of. But um, I think to myself, if you did get a three-minute warning, what do you do in that time, right? Do you wash a hand? Which hand? You can't boil an egg because it's not going to be ready. So you'd be better to take your device and say hi to Scotty McClue. So there we are. Uh, you just made it for Scotty singing. Absolutely. You can yap bro, says Frankie Keen. Frankie, you, ha you ain't heard nothing yet. We haven't even started. You've got another 25 years of Scotty McClue as we build up internationally across the internet. Very good, crashed on me when I was typing. <laughs> yes, that's uh, technology for you. And the audience are there from the start to the end. Scotty McClue, the world's top talk show, just for you, saying dinky do. I'm going to push off now, folks. It's been a privilege being with you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Think about all the points we raise. Think outside the box. Use your wonderful mind. Drop your prejudices. Remember, there's only one race, the human race. And remember, you can only have a fight if you have them and us. If it's just us, everything is dinky-doo. I'm going to sing for you now. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. Of we Tarzan. Au revoir. And a cheerio. Scotty McClue is saying dinky doo to every single one of you. Good night and God bless. Dinky doo, Giuseppe. Scotty McClue has left the building. Ta da, lads! <laughs>